noise figure of Lucy Wilkins of power dividers. Uh, in the previous video, we have studied how to obtain the noise figure uh, for a Lucy uh, transmission line section mismatched to uh, the generator. Now we are going to present another example, but in this example, we are going to assume it is Lucy, but it is matched. So assume that we are studying a Wilkinson bar divider and in general Wilkinson bar divider is a 3 volt network port 1, port 2 and port 3 and uh, the scattering matrix for a general Wilkinson bar divider is S is minus J over square root 2 multiplied by the scattering matrix 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0 such that all the boards S11, S22, and S33 are matched. So S11 equal S22 equal S33 equal 0. And the power from board 1 is divided between board 2 and board 3 in equal magnitude and equal phase. So minus G over square root 2. So S21 and S31 is as a magnitude is 1 over square root 2, 1 over square root 2. Uh, on the other hand, if the power is incident from board 2, it will be delivered to board 1, and half of the power it would be absorbed by the shunt resistance to Z0Q, such that the board number 3 would be isolated. So, if the bar is coming from board 2, half of the bar would be delivered to board 1. So, S12 is 1 over square root 2 as a magnitude, while S32 is 0. In a similar way, the power from board 3, half of the power would be delivered to board 1, and the other half it would be absorbed in the shunt resistance to Z0. So, S13, the power at board 1, due to the power at board 3, is 1 over square root 2. And the power at board 2, due to board 3, is 2, 3, is 0. Assuming that the Wilkinson power divider is lossy, so the power will not be divided exactly from board 1 to board 2 and board 3, there will be some attenuation. So instead of 1 over square root 2, we are going to say 1 over square root 2 multiplied by L. Where here L here is a factor which accounts for the dissipative losses from board 1 to board 2 and board 3. So this represents some loss factor. So, if our Wilkinson bar divider is a lossy, uh, the scattering matrix will be modified by adding a coefficient L multiplied by the factor 2 here, where the magnitude of L or the value of L is greater than unit. Uh, the question now is, what is the noise figure for such Lucy Wilkinson bar divider? To obtain the noise figure in this case, we are going to match port 3 by a matched load. So the problem now is converted back to two port network. I have port 1 and port 2. And I'm talking about the noise figure from port 1 to port 2. So in this case, if I have board 1 and board 2 are the input and the output and board 3 is terminated with a matched load so the reflection coefficient at the output board port number 2 it will be given by S22 plus S12 multiplied by S21 multiplied by the reflection coefficient at the source over 1 minus S11 multiplied by the reflection coefficient at the source Assuming that uh, this Wilkinson bar divider is connected to a matched source and a matched load, so the value 
of gamma source is assumed to be zero. And already we know that S11 is zero and S22 is zero. So S22 is zero and gamma source is zero. So the reflection at the output, gamma output, it would be zero. So gamma output, it would be simply zero. On the other hand, uh, the maximum available gain, G21, for the general uh, lossy mismatch to both network is given by S, the magnitude of S21 squared multiplied by 1 minus gamma source squared over 1 minus S11 multiplied by gamma source, all of them is squared, multiplied by 1 minus gamma out squared. Already we have S11 is 0, gamma source is 0, so this is simply unity. We have gamma out is 0, so this is simply unity. Gamma source is 0, so this is simply unity. So the maximum available gain is simply S21 to the power squared as a magnitude. S21 is 1 over square root 2L as a magnitude. So S21 squared is simply 1 over 2L. So the maximum available gain for such a Kinson power divider, assuming that it is matched at the source, it would be 1 over 2 multiplied by L. And L here is the attenuation uh, factor. If the attenuation factor is unity, it would be simply 1 over 2. So half of the power at the input power would be transmitted to board 2. So now we have the maximum available gain, G21, is simply 1 over 2L. From this, we can obtain the equivalent noise temperature for this Wilkinson bar divider as 1 minus G21 over G21 multiplied by uh, the physical temperature of the Wilkinson bar divider by replacing uh, G21 by 1 over 2L. So this one, it would be 1 minus 1 over 2L over 1 over 2L. So this can be arranged as 2L minus 1 multiplied by the physical temperature of the Wilkinson power divider. Now, the noise figure of such Wilkinson power divider, of such Lucy Wilkinson power divider, it would be 1 plus uh, the effective uh, noise temperature Te over the room temperature T0. So it would be 1 plus 2L minus 1 multiplied by the temperature of the divider over the room temperature. If the temperature of the divider is the same as the room temperature, this would be simply T0 over T0. So if the divider is at room temperature, it would be uh, 1 plus 2L minus 1. So it would be simply the noise figure, it would be simply 2L. So the noise figure in this case, it would be 2 multiplied by L. Uh, if there is no attenuation inside uh, the Wilkinson bar divider, the value of L would be unity. And in this case, the noise figure of Wilkinson bar divider it would be simply 2. Uh, in terms of dB, it would be simply 3 dB. And this actually uh, the physical uh, noise uh, because of the attenuation due to the shunt uh, resistance. Because actually the shunt resistance absorbs half the power. So effectively, the idea with Kinson bar divider without any losses, it has an attenuation uh, 3 dB. And as I said, if I have an attenuation 3 dB, it means that the noise figure could be 3 dB. This is exactly the same thing. But if I have, in addition to the power loss due to the shunt resistance, additional power losses in the strips of uh, the Wilkinson power divider. So in this case, the value of L is greater than unity. And in this case, the value of the noise figure is greater than 2. And uh, it would be greater than uh, 3. Okay. Another example. What will be the noise figure for a mismatched amplifier? Assume that I have an amplifier with gain G and noise figure F and bandwidth V. And this 
Amplifier is connected to uh, a source with a characteristic impedance Z naught such that this source is mismatched to the amplifier. In this case, we have reflection coefficient from the source to uh, the amplifier equals gamma. And we have already the noise figure of the amplifier F. Uh, we have the input signal, S input, and the input noise, noise input. And we have the output signal is output and output noise in output and assume that it is matched at the output point. Uh, so in this case the relation between the output signal and input signal, the output signal is the output. It would be simply the gain multiplied by the input signal multiplied by one minus the magnitude of the reflection coefficient square. This effectively uh, the reflection loss 1 minus gamma squared is the reflection loss here so the output signal not, it would not be simply the gain multiplied by the input signal but the input signal which reached inside the uh, amplifier so the input signal reached inside the amplifier is 1 minus gamma squared of the input signal this is the output signal uh, the input noise is simply KT naught multiplied by B, assuming that we are working in uh, the room temperature. So we have input signal SI here. Uh, the output noise. The output noise in this case, it would be as follows. The input noise signal would be amplified by a factor of G. And some of the noise, it would be reflected back. So G multiplied by 1 minus gamma squared. So the output noise from the input part would be G multiplied by K T naught multiplied by B multiplied by one, by 1 minus gamma squared. 1 minus gamma squared because of the reflection at the input board of the amplifier. In addition to this amplified noise, we have the internal noise from uh, the amplifier itself. So the internal noise from the amplifier itself it would be K multiplied by the effective temperature of the amplifier, T effective, or multiplied by the gain, multiplied by the bandwidth. The effective temperature for the amplifier can be obtained in terms of the noise figure of the amplifier as uh, the effective temperature it would be T naught multiplied by T naught is uh, the room temperature, 290 uh, Kelvin multiplied by the noise figure minus 1. This is the relation between the effective temperature and the noise figure. So this bar, T0 multiplied by F minus 1, is actually the effective noise temperature of the amplifier. So K multiplied by T effective multiplied by B multiplied by the gain, this would be the additive noise in this case. So the total output noise it would be the amplified noise from the input plus the additive noise from uh, the internal noise inside the amplifier itself. Now, if you are interested to calculate uh, the noise figure for the case of the mismatched amplifier, uh, okay, it would be the signal to noise ratio at the input over the signal to the noise ratio at the output. So, the noise figure of the mismatched amplifier it would be uh, input signal multiplied by output noise over output signal multiplied by the input uh, noise. So assume that we have here signal input. And we have noise output and noise input and signal output. So assume that we are going to multiply this by this. We are going to multiply this by this. So we have signal input, noise output over signal output, noise input. So this signal input.
will be eliminated with this signal input and the value of k t naught b in the denominator here will be eliminated with k naught t b and this k naught t b so and here we have g eliminated with this g but we do ah we have another g here with eliminated with this g so the remaining part it would be One minus gamma squared plus f minus one over one minus gamma squared. This can be simplified as one minus gamma squared over one minus gamma squared is unity. And here f minus one over one minus gamma squared. So f minus one over one minus gamma squared. So it can be noted here the obtained noise figure for the mismatched amplifier equals 1 plus f minus 1 over 1 minus gamma squared. Uh, actually, uh, the value of the reflection coefficient gamma is greater than 0 and less than unity. This means that the denominator here is less than unity. So, actually, we are multiplying this factor with a factor greater than unity. So, we have something, for example, x multiplied by f minus x and x here is greater than unity this means that the value of the noise figure for the mismatched amplifier is greater than the value of the noise figure of the same amplifier when it is matched so fm increases as the mismatch increases as the value of gamma increases the mismatched noise figure increases so this result demonstrates that uh, to obtain good noise figure, it is required to reduce the reflection coefficient or improve the matching. As a limit case, if the value of gamma is zero, this would be one plus f minus one. So the noise figure it would be simply the noise figure of the original amplifier. Or in other words, the noise figure for mismatched amplifier is always greater than the noise figure of the original amplifier. So to obtain the maximum or the optimum performance for the noise figure, to obtain the optimum performance for the noise figure, to obtain the minimum noise figure, it is required to make the amplifier or the circuit to be matched to the source. So this result demonstrates that the good noise figure requires good impedance matching. So we have studied the noise figure now for uh, different circuits. We have studied uh, the noise figure for uh, mismatched uh, transmission line section. We have studied the noise figure for uh, a lossy uh, Wilkinson power divider. We have studied the noise figure for mismatched amplifier. And almost all uh, these examples has the same result that uh, to obtain minimum noise, it would be better that the input of the board would be matched to the source, such that there will be no reflection between the source and uh, the two board uh, network. By this end, we have completed our study about uh, the noise, and effectively the noise uh, limits what is the minimum power which can be used by uh, the RF circuit or uh, the microwave circuit. The other limit is determined by the nonlinearity of uh, the circuit, uh, and nonlinearity determines what is the upper limit for the power for uh, the microwave circuit. So, in the following video, we are going to introduce what is a nin uh, what is a nonlinear distortion, and what is the source of this nonlinear distortion, and what is the effect of this nonlinear distortion. And from this nonlinearity, we are going to determine the upper limit. 
and already we have determined the lower limit so from the upper limit and the lower limit we can determine the dynamic range for the microwave set see you in the next video